And this morning it was a, it was a better on France, but on American Boulevard, sometimes two tracks and sometimes none. <laughs> Your mic is all set. What? I have to double check. Just make sure it was not earlier. Watermelon, ooh, there you go, cucumber. You don't have to sing very low with that. I guess not. Kevin did adjust the sound. <laughs> I didn't bring the earplugs this morning. I know. I turned the uh, speaker up here on. Okay. Say, what was what was the situation with the uh, with the service on Christmas Eve? New system that I'm using, so it does it differently, so I have a learning curve. I 
blessed Christmas as we gather together. We gather together during this Christmas season as the rest of the world has kind of forgotten about what's going on now. As we actually start and are in that uh, Christmas season, we have two Sundays this year in the Christmas season before we run into Epiphany. So it is a blessing as we get to spend a little extra time this year looking at Jesus, looking at him as a child, as a baby, and all of what happened and took place on our behalf. A couple of uh, announcements going forward. Uh, first of all, we'll have our Christmas, or Christmas, our New Year's Eve service will be at 7 o'clock in person and online. So uh, New Year's Eve, which is Thursday this year, at 7 o'clock we will have our worship service time as we gather together. And so as we gather for our Lord's Word, as we gather together remembering all of what He has done and accomplished on our behalf, we begin by singing our opening hymn, Now Sing We Now Rejoice. <clears throat> Grant 
that we may ever be alive in him, who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, and with one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and as we continue through our Christmas season worship, we sing angels we have heard on high. Our epistle text 
comes from Galatians, the fourth chapter. And as Paul is reading forward, writing this for those Galatians, about halfway through his book, these words are very much pointing us towards what took place. In other words, as Jesus was born of Mary, as all of that happened, why did that have to happen? And what's the result of that? Why? Because of the law and sin. And what? Our salvation. And so in these words here in, in uh, Galatians, Paul is writing with the thought of what's going on. St. Paul wrote, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And at this time, will my girls come forward for the uh, children's message? just gone through Christmas Eve and we've just gone through Christmas Day and so now we've got something else that's been added up here. What was it? You got it. Now that we are in the Christmas season, all the way, kind of when all the world was celebrating Christmas since, what, Labor Day? <laughs> we've not had, we've had at best an empty manger, right? And then, two days ago, baby Jesus, because we're now in that Christmas season. And on Christmas Day, Sophia, what did you bring up? Jesus. You brought the baby Jesus into this manger, right? Remembering what has been done. And throughout that entire Advent season, we're looking at names of Jesus, right? Yay. So, come on over here. And we took a moment before... And uh, we look at the one crown, right? Jesus being the king of kings, right? And I think I think I let you pick, right, Sophia? So now it's your turn to pick one tree. <laughs> this one? We can certainly do that one. So you can kind of hold that. And so that is an angel that's right there. And it's got a couple of thoughts with it being an angel. Because first of all, here I'll hold it for just a moment. Remember when the shepherds were in their fields? Who showed up to them? The angel. The angel, right? And do you remember what he told them? Yes, I okay. do. What? A little bit. Um, a child, the Redeemer, is waiting for you in Bethlehem as a child. Awesome. Remembrance. And so the angels were there. And who are they pointing to, just like you said? Yes? To Jesus, right? The angels were pointing to Jesus. And that is an incredible thing. And we'll get one more today as well. So, Sophia, you can pick one as well. This one? All right. And so here we have another one. It's kind of a circle. With a cross and another cross in there, right? No, not another cross. It's just X. Okay, with an X. You're right. Actually, it's a chi, technically. And so <laughs> it's got a couple of things here on it. And so you've got, it's uh, just like uh, we got to this one. It's got a P and an X. First two letters of the name Christ. And, uh, and that's kind of what's in there, too. It's got that P and an X in green. You know, well, this one lets you see it a little bit easier. But this one is supposed to be the first two letters of Jesus' name for Christ. 
And it also is kind of a star image too. A lot of them have multiple ideas. And what showed the wise men in order how to get to Jesus? You got it. You can put that back on if you like that. And then we'll come over here for a prayer. I'm waiting for you. Don't you worry. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you that you are my Christ. Thank you that you are my Christ. Come, born of Mary, for me. Come, born of Mary, for me. I adore and praise you. I adore and praise you. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go back. I think Carol's got some of the suckers right there. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And here we're looking at eight days after that Christmas day on which Jesus was born. As Mary and Joseph are bringing Jesus up to the temple for the uh, naming, for the circumcision, to get everything done that the Old Testament said needed to be done. And as they're up there at that temple, this is what took place. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came into the temple, it came in the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said Lord now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and speak to him of, to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. We confess what our Lord has done for us in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our sermon. Let all together praise our God. Remembering these last couple of weeks, 
as you had everybody looking at the tree and you had the presence there underneath and everybody is immediately thinking and going forward what's in this present what's in that present can you remember maybe one of the kids going off and taking a gift and trying to move it around and what exactly is in it oh those are legos all right i know one of the more difficult ones that we had i uh, was getting a uh, trying to hide a skateboard this year that's interesting trying to uh, wrap that thing up i'll tell you that much i know for myself thinking of all the kind of presents and gifts here i really enjoy i got a uh, iron man lego kit this year got it all done yesterday <laughs> now, this is the one that's online not the actual one that i put together but it looks almost it looks identical now thinking of those gifts Thinking of the presents and things that we've had. Some of us were presents that we've had, we were kind of waiting for maybe a week or two. When's this going to be open? When can I open up that gift? Maybe somebody went over and looked up in a stocking. Oh, now I have to wait two weeks before I get to actually play with that. Others have had a gift waiting for a little while as they've been going forward here. And sorry, Steve, I didn't ask you if this was okay. But as we're kind of waiting on gifts that were to come, I think this was a pretty good gift here. Uh, and it was a triplets, if I'm telling, if I'm saying it right, correct? Now, grandchildren, I'll put that much in there. And so triplets coming up here, and just a little over a week ago, all three of them were able to come home. Sometimes you've been waiting for a while and then waiting for things to happen and praying that everything is okay and then waiting for that kind of Christmas gift and I think that was a beautiful Christmas gift and if I remember right the baptisms in a week is that right yes. and so that'll be another incredible blessing going forward it's kind of thinking of the gifts I've done many a, many a baptism, many a confirmation, where you're looking at the gift that the Lord is doing. My first baptisms that I did at the first church that I served was a uh, identical twins that were brought forward. And that was pretty special and unusual, especially for a town of about 300 people. Now imagine that uh, the triplets being, very, uh, being baptized, that would be an incredible time and we'll be very blessed going forward. But far too many are at this point already, aren't they? They've gone through the gifts. We've had everything out there since, was it Labor Day? I think I actually saw a few Christmas things being put up in the end of August here. With everything that's been going on, I think people were jumping the gun even more than normal. That it was still, what was it in, uh, uh, in last August, when it was like 80 degrees outside, a little bit warmer than right now, and you start putting up the Christmas decorations already. People have been waiting seemingly forever to get to this Christmas season. But for most of the world, Christmas Eve happened or Christmas Day happened, and they're done with it. Okay, I, we've been going through this for four months now. Now it's done, now I can get on to whatever is the next thing. Whether it's the New Year's, or the bull season, or Valentine's, or whatever else comes next. But to a certain degree, you could rail against society where this incredible, holy, thing that matters so much, Emmanuel, God with us, kind of gets pushed to the wayside. But on the other hand, I kind of am appreciative of it. Because all the commercialism, all the stuff that's out there, all the, when am I going to open the presents? Can't you be good? Can't you? It's kind of done. And now we, as God's people, as all of that other stuff is gone, can take the time to look at what's really going on and really happening here. Because we had that holy night as we gathered on Christmas Eve. 
We had that time with the candles and the lights and all of that. Knowing that we were about to start celebrating this Easter or this Christmas season. Easter will be coming. Celebrating this Christmas season as we go forward. We had that day two days ago. As now the child is in the manger. Now we have that he is with us and has come. That waiting is kind of over. And that's what we run into in our gospel reading for today. We come to a man named Simeon. And you're thinking of all the gifts that we could think of. Now he was waiting for a gift. Now all of what we read about in our gospel reading, that all kind of came forward eight days after Christmas. After that Christmas day. Because it was on that eighth day that you would then, if you were in the area, go to the temple. And being at the temple, that's where you would then go forward and you would have the circumcision, you would have the preparations, you would have the cleansing, you would have these sacrifices. So there was a number of things that had to be done on that eighth day. And so Mary and Joseph, they were now in Bethlehem. So while we're in Bethlehem, it's just, you know, about a few miles walk to get up to the temple. We'll go up to the temple. We'll make this all happen on that day at the temple. You can just think of how blessed parents they were going forward. And so they went up to that place where Simeon was, where Anna was, and they were in that temple. And it's amazing when you're looking at the gift that had been promised to Simeon. And it had been promised to him by the Holy Spirit. Now just take a step back here a moment. As we read that gospel reading, you notice the Holy Spirit is mentioned quite a few times in there. It was the Holy Spirit who had let Simeon know of the promise of what was to come. It was the Holy Spirit who was at work in Simeon as he went into the temple to do the work that he needed to do that day. And it was the Holy Spirit who let him know that this child is the Christ. Now just think of the people of Israel for a moment. And the Holy Spirit had been giving these promises again and again and again. When Adam and Eve first sinned, God took care of them and started the promise. You come to Noah, you go to Abraham, and you have that promise and that covenant that is given. You come to Moses, and you have it put, literally, written in the stone for the people. You go forward, the promises to David, the promises through Solomon, the more clear promises, that the closer you get, the more clear they become. As Isaiah talks about, and the virgin will give birth to a child. You go to Micah, O oh, you Bethlehem, Ephrathah. God taking the time to say five centuries before him the exact city where this will all happen and this will all take place as it goes forward. And so with all of that having taken place, you then had the period of quiet, about four centuries or so, between the end of the prophets and John the Baptist. Four centuries of waiting and not hearing more promises of what is to come. So they had been waiting for that long. And then the Holy Spirit told Simeon. How he told Simeon doesn't tell us. Like the rest, it could have been an angel. It could have been a special thing in a dream like what was given to Joseph. It could have been a direct revelation from the Lord bringing this out of his mouth. It was definitely the Holy Spirit at work. How it happened, we're not told. But that a promise had been given to Simeon. And the promise was this. In your lifetime, you will see the Christ. You will see the promised one of God. And I actually love this image. I'm trying to get the two screens together. I actually love this image 
that joy, that worship of the Lord. He had been told, okay, Simeon, you will get to see the Christ. But then he had to keep on waiting. And he had to keep on waiting. And as he waited upon this, he very patiently waited on the Lord. But I could imagine in my mind that, you know what? The Lord's waited too long. I could imagine myself kind of being in uh, Abraham and Sarah's situation where they're told, you'll have a son, just wait. And not wanting to wait. And then when it gets to be that time, now, that's not what Simeon did. Simeon, going in with the Spirit into the temple that day, was directed. And it could have been other priests that would have had this opportunity, but he is directed to go forward. And he meets Mary and Joseph and the eight-day-old baby. And holding that little infant child bringing him up. Now there wasn't anything special that suddenly made everybody say, oh, this must be Jesus. As Mary was bringing Jesus into the temple, he didn't have some kind of halo that was up here. He wasn't going through and all of a sudden this bright light is shining out of this child. However, it was the Holy Spirit. Let Simeon know, this is it. You've been waiting. You've been preparing. This is the child that was told to Adam and Eve, that was told to Moses, that was told to Abraham, to Isaiah, to Micah, to David, to Solomon, to you. This is the child here in front of you. And I love the image of him smiling and rejoicing. Having had to wait that much, you couldn't help but smile. If all of a sudden after waiting, now there's triplets and they're all healthy. How can you not smile and rejoice in the Lord for what he has done? And I love that image of joy that just kind of surrounds his face as it goes forward. And the words, whether he prepared it or not, we're not told. But from Luke 2, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, may thou dismiss your servant in peace. Lord, I've seen the gift. I've seen the Christ child. I've seen what is here before me, O oh Lord. My eyes have seen it. Your word is fulfilled. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. You're almost at the image there of kind of doubting Thomas, where he was doubting, Lord, unless I see, I will not believe. Now, Simeon was believing anyway, but he was just praising the Lord. I said, Lord, I've seen your salvation. This is the one promised in the face of all people. You have prepared it. You have gotten it ready. And here it is now. It is now the fullness of time. Everything is prepared. Everything is ready. Praise you, O Lord. A light for the revelation of the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Just imagine being the one to see that child, to give up the offering, to give up the sacrifice, to do this. And he knows rightly all of what Isaiah said again and again and again, that all of this has been done, Lord, for all the nations and your people Israel. This child, this Redeemer, this Savior, this Christ has come. And I get to hold the Christ. I get to hold the child that will work one day to save their people from their sins. And the child's father and mother marvel at what was said about him. 
Boy, would any of us have marveled. But you can imagine very much Mary and Joseph together going up, doing the next right thing that needed to be done, keeping in their minds probably, we've got the turtle doves, we've got the child, we've got it set up. Nowadays, I think I've got the Zoom thing set forward. But in the midst of all of that, we're ready. They weren't ready to hear that of what would happen. They marveled, or as Mary said, treasured all these things, pondered them in her heart. Remember the old King James way of talking about all of this? And then he takes a step further. Then, Simeon blessed them. So he gave them the blessing. One of my favorite parts of baptisms and confirmations is when I get to go forward and give the blessing. One of my favorite parts, really of the whole ministry, is when I'm able to take that child, I baptize in the name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and bless that child. Or when I've spent two years with someone in confirmation, and they now come forward, and I'm able to give a blessing upon them. Simeon, in his ministry, was now able to give that blessing upon the Christ child that would come for us. For behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And many did rise and many did fall. And for a sign that is opposed. How many people in Jesus' ministry opposed him? Especially the leaders as they went forward. And then to Mary, and a sword will pierce through your soul also. And that's that image of Good Friday. Many of you have seen that image before where you have Mary, Jesus taken down from the cross. We're not told specifically in Scripture, but we can imagine in our heads, holding Jesus' body after he has died for the salvation of the world. That's kind of the point on that Good Friday, that Simeon is letting Mary know about what is to come. That is the sword that does pierce her soul as her son knowing it would kind of happen but seeing it happen that Jesus went to that cross and died for us there is the fulfillment of what Simeon had brought forward that's the fulfillment of this hole where we have the white where our sins are covered over by what Jesus did. That the gift of Jesus has come into the world. That the gift was seen by Simeon and proclaimed to those in the temple by him. That the gift went to that cross. And there, our sins are washed away, are cleansed away. And we belong to our Lord's now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We say our last three verses of our sermon here.
Give them, Lord, peace, strength. Shield them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for our friends and our families. We ask, Lord, be with Joan, Doug, Amy, Steve, Debbie, Marlis, Mabel, Steve, Anita, Mar Marilyn, Norma, Warren, Carol, Larry, Mark, Keith, and Jean. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would watch over us as a nation. We pray, Lord, for your blessings. We pray, Lord, for your care. Be with all of our elected officials. Grant them your wisdom. Grant them your strength. Especially we pray for our President and Vice President, our Congress, Supreme Court, and Judiciary. We ask, Lord, to be with our governor, our legislature, and all of our elected officials. For those that have been elected and have yet to serve their office, we ask that you will bless them during this transition time. Guide their words, guide their lives, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And finally, for these who are all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray, the words of the Lord taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord left his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn.
this a very delicate combination? Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, this will mean a lot about them, even apart from the Thank you. 